Hello, 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 and welcome. Y'all, we are here. We are here. It is the 12th annual Restoring the Bond Mother Daughter Love event. And we are like over the moon excited. This is our 12th year. Woo! <laughs> Y'all, 12 years. This started out as, as, as a way for moms and their teenage daughters to connect. It started out as a way for us to show that there is that, that gap of time, right? when they are little girls and they're walking in our heels and then they're always under mama and they want to do what mama did and does and all that. And, and then around 10, 12, 11, <laughs> some things happen, you know, around 12, they're like, okay, lady, just make sure I'm fed and have a roof over my head. See you later. I don't know you lady. Um, and so there, it is not, you know, all of us are ladies and all of us have been, have been little girls, teenagers at one time. And it's just a progression of time where there's a disconnect in the communication. Now, that's how we started out. But then as we grew and we grew and we grew, some things start to happen. And that was we saw that there was a request from adult mothers and adult Dora specifically adults who were asking for this, who were asking, when are you going to have something that includes adult mothers and adult daughters and their mothers? Because we find that there's that communication gap there too. There's, there's that need too, but it wasn't time. It wasn't time, you know, in 2009. It wasn't time in 2004. It wasn't time in, in 2013 or whenever. It wasn't time. But what happened was this little thing called, you may have heard of it, pandemic, sound familiar? Yeah, we, we might have heard a little something about it. And so it was during this time that literally God said, now is the time. I didn't understand it at the time when God gave instruction, but I did understand it when it came to pass. So in 2020, we opened it up to all ladies of all ages, because let's face it, we all are somebody's daughter, right? And so we open it up and it was virtual, of course, because, you know, that little thing called the panorama. And so we had it, we had it virtually and it was amazing. We had two phenomenal speakers at that time. And, and forgive me, Pollen is not my friend, um, but um, we had two amazing speakers. And then in 2021, we did that thing again. We opened it up um, because that was the that was the that was the gateway. That was the opening to us having it fully for every lady, right? Any age group, teenager, preteen, adult, senior, right? And so last year we had again some phenomenal speakers. Again, we had it virtually, and again it was dynamic. So guess what? We are in year twelve. Here it is. 2021 and you guys we have some amazing speakers listen and this time as you already know because you're watching us virtually and you're here in a room guess what it's a hybrid so you get the opportunity to be here face to face and you get to be here with us virtually and huh, the part that really i'm excited about is our rites of passage ceremony now if you've been with us for any amount of time where in the past we've had the rites of passage ceremony, you already know it's not your typical rites of passage. And every year is different. Every year is, is, is God ordained. Now you may have, you may be thinking a rites of passage is when a young woman has a transition period from being a young lady to being a woman. And there is a rites of passage that takes place, whether it is a physical, um, giving of something or there's something that they do. This is a little different. You'll see later. Stay tuned. You'll see later. Stay put. So, and we have some amazing things that we have um, that you'll be able to, that our, our in-person guests will be taking with them. However, um, we, we want to make sure that 
um, we show some love to our virtual guests as well. So if you are virtual joining with us, go ahead and hit that share button because that's going to be important. I'm um, Those who share and invite the most on social media, there's going to be something that you're going to be getting. So I'm going to be monitoring social media in just a little bit just to see. And there, there are going to be times when I'm going to ask you to make a comment um, in, on social media. So, hmm. There may be something in this for you, so we shall see. And of course, those who are, in, who are in person, I have some goodies up my proverbial sleeve here for you as well. So let's get started. Oh, you know what? I didn't tell you guys who I am, because there may be some people who are tuning in who have never met me. Shame on you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Listen, I am Chelsea Cookie Payne. I am the founder of Payne and Glory Incorporated. We are a nonprofit 501c3 organization, and we stand firmly upon three major platforms, one of which being domestic violence awareness and prevention. That is our main platform on which we, we started. Then we expanded to include women's health and wellness. And then our most recent initiative, which we started in 2014, which is Pain and Abuse mental health and ministry. We started, Pain and Glory, we started in 2005. So we've been around for a little while. So, and we're excited that you are here. And so listen, let's get this show on the road. Are we ready? Yeah, All right, I love the energy, I love it. So we are going to start off, I don't know how far I'm gonna get without these, so let me switch into my Wonder Woman shade glasses because you know Wonder Woman had a superpowers and mine happen to be my glasses. <laughs> so we're going to get started with our first speaker. Now our first speaker, uh, before I even read you know what's on the proverbial notes and care and all, let me just tell y'all. So I have not, I haven't known her as long as I've known her sister, but I follow her on social media. So once I tell y'all her name, I need you, not now, because y'all are in here, so you know, mind your business now. But once we're done, I need you to go and follow her on Instagram. You'll see why I'm not even gonna tell you why. I'm not even gonna tell you. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you. But you when you when you see, you'll see. So I have the pleasure of introducing Miss Britta Tabor. So Britta is not oh go ahead now go ahead I'm <laughs> Britta is not a blogger or even an influencer she is a change agent Britta's journey is to help women find their true and authentic selves by knowing who and whose they are from the inside out. Through her faith and fashion, Britta's purpose is to help women know who, know when they shine, they give others permission to them to do the same. She teaches women how to think outside the box for different clothing options and offers fashion advice to those who feel their eye for fashion is a bit blurred. As a middle-aged woman, hey, anyway, <laughs> she deserves to empower women to, to embrace their curves. I have some. <laughs> Make no apology for the woman and women that they are and celebrate the woman they strive to become. Her faith, family, fashion, and femininity are the four things that inspire her to help others. She believes that if you give, if you have God on your side, the family that loves and supports you, and a great sense of style, you have the perfect recipe for success. Not only is Britta a change agent for women, but she is also a wife of 26 years to her life partner. They are dedicated to the partnership and maintain a long-term perspective so that short-term problems don't threaten the marriage. Using love and clear communication, both spouses are committed to persevering through both good and difficult situations. Ladies, I gentlemen, I present to you Britta Tabor. Oh, hey, 
Hey, yo, hey. Hey. Hey, everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah. You, you know, microphones, I, I tend to talk very loud. So if the microphone works, I'll use it. If not, I won't. But I'm so excited to be here. Uh, didn't know I was going to be first out the gate. You know, you want to hear what somebody else is going to do and see what they got to say first. But you know what? You said, be you so ready, right? Okay, I'm ready. We ready. We ready. So I am excited and delighted to be here today. When I got the call, I'm going to call a cookie because I, I, a cookie is cookie, right? <laughs> so when I got the call, I was like, me? Why? Oh, my gosh. Uh, okay. What do you want me to talk about? And so in, in her words, just be you. Just tell your story. So I am going to be sensitive of the time. So y'all give me a little wave or something. Let me know how I'm doing on time because I want to be respectful of those who are here and also online. So as I struggled with today, um, being Mother's Day weekend, you know, my mother passed a while ago. It's been, I think this is going on our third year. So this weekend does not sit well for me. So for me, I was just like, oh my gosh, I really just want to kind of be at home, Netflix it maybe, and just kind of get through it because I don't have the energy to kind of deal with it and see everybody else and the moms and the memories. But I am grateful to God because he gives me that distraction. And this is that distraction. When you are going through something, he will use you for purpose, right? And so it, even in that pain of my loss, I'm still here to help somebody else. Amen. So as I was trying to figure out what I wanted to talk about or what direction I needed to come from, what came to me was Matthew 22 and 14. Many are called, few are chosen. All right. And you will understand this as I kind of go into my story. So I am, I've been married for 28 years now. Can you believe it? Oh my God. So when I, hey, hey, hey. so when I, before I got married, you know, as a little girl in your head, you're just like, oh my gosh, I want, I want to be a mom and I want to have a daughter and I want her to be chocolate just like me. And I just, oh my gosh, she's going to have the pigtails, ponytails and ruffles. And you make your request known to the Lord, right? Got married. Oh my gosh, I'm excited about this journey because I'm going to have a baby girl. She's just going to be chocolate like me and have a great personality and have a wonderful blend of me and her dad. I'm just excited about the journey. It sounded exciting, but we don't know what we have to go through to get to, right? So my husband and I were unable to conceive. So therefore, we tried IVF. That is a whole pickle in a jar by itself. It is very uh, emotionally draining, financially draining, but I knew God to have favor and I knew that he would show himself in whatever it is of the desire of my heart because he knew what I wanted. He knew what I wanted. So during our process, we had three different attempts with IVF. So with the first attempt, it didn't work. So you, could, you already know that that was an emotional struggle. The second one stuck. We didn't share it with anybody because it was like, okay, let's try to get through, I guess, the first trimester and then we'll kind of move from there. Three weeks into that journey, the egg fell off. So for me, the emotional strain that that did, I said, okay, I don't want to do the third one just yet. Let's just pray about it and kind of see what happens. And so from there, I began to get a little angry with God because, okay, you told me that I could have the desires of my heart. You know what I want. I told you what I wanted and you didn't give it to me. So I'm not feeling you right now because that's what I wanted. So as I kind of grew in life, my husband and I, we, I have a stepson. I'm a bonus mom. So I have a son, but at the same time, that wasn't the little girl that I wanted right? So I love my son. We have an awesome and phenomenal relationship, but he still was not necessarily what I wanted. So as we go through this journey and years kind of go by, Britta will always be the cheerleader and champion for someone at their baby showers and how can I help and got God kids all over the place, but yet and still, I still didn't have what I wanted. As I got further in life, I decided that I wanted to be a caregiver. And becoming a caregiver came with a lot of roles, responsibilities, and especially when it is someone who is of special needs. So I decided, okay, I'm gonna open up a, 
a group home for people who are high functioning special needs. And I got to start this process with a whole lot of training and preparation for that. And then I got Cindy. Cindy has been a part of our family for over 22 years. Now, when I got Cindy, Cindy was a little rough around the edge. Okay. So Cindy was a, that, that's Cindy. You want the microphone, sis? Can I have it back? Thank you. That's Cindy, y'all. Y'all will meet her. Y'all will see her in a minute. So when Cindy came to our family, it was a struggle. It was a struggle to understand her needs. It was a, under, a, a struggle to understand her desire. And it was a struggle to understand the role that I played in giving her a better life. So when we ask God for something, we have to be mindful of two different things. I was very specific about what I wanted. And what I wanted and what he wanted was two different things. So with that being said, God has a great sense of humor. So he showed me that he could do it, right? But he said to me, that's not the way I'm going to do it. So with that being said, many are called, but few are chosen. So he chose me to take a different path, being a stepmother and to be a care provider for someone who has never had a mother figure in her life. He chose me for that role and responsibility. He chose me to be the protector and the provider for someone who could not provide for themselves. And not only did he do that, the one request that he did fulfill, I told him that I wanted my daughter to be chocolate, right? <laughs> but what he decided to do was he didn't give me a dark chocolate, he gave me a white chocolate, all right? <laughs> Come here, Cindy. <laughs> So this is my little white chocolate. <laughs> so this is my daughter. This is my daughter, Cindy. She came to our family at a very rough stage in her life. And literally, after the third day, I said, I can't do this. It was a lot. There were a lot of emotional concerns. There was a lot of kicking, screaming, fighting, biting, all of those great things, right? Oh yeah, all of that. But then God said, okay, if you're not gonna do it, then who will? So with that being said, I had to make another choice. Do I stay, stick, stay in play, or do I send her back into the system? So then I had to say to myself, okay, if the shoe were on the other foot, what would you want someone to do for you? So with that being said, I made a choice to be chosen. It came with fulfillment. It came with a new level of patience, sweet Jesus. It came with a level of understanding. And let the truth be told, if I were Cindy, I would want to love. I would want to be a part of somebody that really wanted me to be there. So therefore, I had to create that for her. So if I had the opportunity to watch her by the time you came to us, you were 18, 18 or 19. But I caught her at a stage in life where the learning level was uh, uh, elementary, where her mouth was very teenager, right? And then the cuss demon that rides her on a regular basis is real, real grown. So I got all the stages of life in one at the very same time. But many are called, few are chosen. You have to look at your journey where you are, and you have to be willing to accept where God puts you in the role and the responsibility that he wants you to have. So in my head, me conceiving and having my child was my way. What he wanted was something totally different. And with that being said, that doesn't make either one of us greater or lesser. We still hold value. We still hold importance. We still have a responsibility to make sure that our children have what they need growing up. In that same season, I always have to look at what she has given me. So it's not always about me giving to her, it's about what she gives to me. She gives me the joy of knowing that I'm sowing a seed into her life and I get to watch it grow. I'm sowing a seed into her life for her to become the woman that I know that God has called her to be. 
this is just the beginning of where she is. And I know that she wants to say something. So I'm going to let you talk for a few minutes, maybe one and a half. It's not going to be too long, sis. Okay, because I feel the urge of just having you to say something, okay? And give the microphone back. Okay. Hello, everybody. And happy Mother's Day to anybody who are mothers. Um, this is my mom, which I love her dearly, even though we go through rough times. Um, I've been through a lot of pain and rough times, even though I, I had a mother but didn't didn't know her or look at, don't know what she looked like. But we've been ready to help me try to look for my birth mother. But didn't, don't want to have nothing to do with me, so I'm just glad I had have a mother who cares about me, loves me, gives me stuff, do stuff for me. Keeps me home sometimes to do photo shoots, which I love dearly. <laughs> love dearly to stay home and do stuff for her. So I'm doing something to help my mom out just because I care about her a lot, even though I, I do stuff. So I'm just glad to be here for my mom. And I'm not just saying that because I do, do care about her and I love her. So I just want to say to my mom, Breda, yeah. I love you, and I do say it because I mean it. I mean, and I want to say happy Mother's Day, and I really love you. Okay. Y'all don't know this is going to come with. So are you taking us out to eat today? No. Uh, can we have some more snacks? No. Can we go by the Dollar Tree no. and get a snack and a, and a soda? It comes no. with a whole bunch of other stuff. I love you too. Y'all go sit down. Go sit down. <laughs> So with that being said, for our mothers that were chosen to go through this path differently, you still hold out. You still have a role and responsibility. And a very dear friend of mine who's one of my blogger boos just came in the door. And I'm going to share a little bit of her story because she is a connection for me. You know, her journey to motherhood has been it was difficult. So I, we, we share a we share an experience of going through IVF. And I'm not gonna cry. And she's seven months now. And she went through the process of IVF and donor. So she was chosen for a different path. And I am just grateful to be a part of her life during this journey and during the stage that she's in. Because I know that pain. And just to, we were talking and she was like, okay, this really isn't real. Is something in here for real? I was like, something is in here, oh my God. So I'm excited to even see the mother that she is going to be because she was chosen for her journey. So Kirby, I thank you so much for the opportunity. Anybody who is a stepmom, a bonus mom, uh, a grandmother taking care of somebody else's kids, an auntie taking care of their nieces and nephews, you are still chosen. You are still chosen to, to do a job and to hold a position and a mission. And we got this. Y'all have another day. Yes. Love you, Mom. Thank you. Let's give it up again for Britta Tabor. Let's see some parts on social media. Don't forget, I told you guys, I am checking social media. I'm looking for something. Uh, so listen, many are called, but few are chosen. How amazing and powerful that is. Again, thank you, Britta. Uh -uh, I'm not going to get me. Mm -hmm. Nope. Mm -hmm. That is so amazing. And congratulations to you. Oh my God. <laughs> listen, I don't know if those of you who are virtual can already tell, but listen, we are excited in this room. And it, it is just like I told you at the beginning when we started, there's so much beauty in this room. There's so much beauty in this room. And so we are going to keep going um, because, listen, this is, this is, I have some. Some goodies, and and after this speaker, you're gonna see what I what I mean. But I'm gonna be sharing some goodies. So if you are virtual, I hope that you have been commenting and sharing, and because uh, there's gonna be something coming soon. So we are going to move on to our very next speaker, who I am honored to share with you guys, Unique Armani. She is an events and operations coordinator 
with four years experience working alongside the team at Florida Citrus Sports. She started as a volunteer in 2018 and worked her way up to the coordinator position in 2021. She specializes in event operations and is responsible for helping coordinate events such as the Florida Cup, two football games, and the Florida Blue Florida Classic Black Battle of the Bands. Along with coordinating events, Armani oversees the day-to-day -day venue management of the Varsity Club at Camping World Stadium. Unique is a powerful force in the workplace and uses her positive attitude and go-getter energy to encourage others to work hard and succeed. She also sits on the board of directors for the Orlando City Foundation and serves as the secretary. In her free time, Unique likes to play, likes to sing, play piano, and do word researches. Wordle has become her morning challenge. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, if you would feast, feast your eyes on the screen, those in, in person, I present to you, Unique Armani. Unique, thank you for being with us all the way from sunny Florida. Hello, hello. Thank you guys for having me. Really honored to be here. Um, can everyone hear me well? I'm gonna take that as a yes. All right. Um, so shout out to my sister, who will you guys will get to meet later on in, in this conference at the conference, virtually as well. Um, she wrote my bio. Um, I had to send, submit a bio for something else, and she is a phenomenal writer. And I know that is my weakness, so I called her my sister. Make my mother proud. Um, sister bonding right there. Um, I am going to be respectful of everyone's time and keep this nice and sweet. So 23 years ago, um, a young teenager, she found herself in a situation that she never would have imagined she would have been in, not at 17 years old. Um, she would somewhat would call made a mistake, um, but I am a testament um, of what God can do and how um, he turns that, turns turns our mistakes and failures um, around for his glory. And specifically, I wanted to reference Genesis 50, um, verse 20. And Joseph, you guys know the story of Joseph with his brothers. Long story short, his brothers now realize it's him. And he tells them, he said, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. And that right there, I just feel like sums up my entire testimony. Um, when my mother had me at 17 years old, there was all types of conflict just thrown her way. One, she was 17. Um, so she has now become a statistic. Two, she's a single mother. Three, the my birth father had even asked her, like, you know, would you even consider an abortion? Um, things like that. So there was always an attack, um, like just coming at me my entire life. And so, but here I am today, strong, healthy. I she fed me. I'm eating well. Um, <laughs> but I say all that to say, as when she when my mother raised me growing up. Um, we, she always made sure we were in the best neighborhood. We were in the best communities. Um, we had the best education, all those things. And I didn't realize how impactful, how important all those things were until I graduated college. Um, I didn't realize, well, not to graduate, but during my time in college, I began to really realize everything she sacrificed. Um, and I want to hone in on my college story a little bit. I am very nervous. Um, I am not an emotional person, but I'm getting very emotional right now. Um, so just bear with me. So when I was a senior in high school, my family, we had lost our home and we have been living out of a hotel. It's going through a transitional um, time. Um, this is my senior year. I am president of the student body. You know, I had all these plans. Um, so I got very depressed because that's not how I wanted my senior year of high school to go. Um, I was mad at my parents. I felt like they were not doing what they should have been doing. I saw other people's parents that were, they had 
X, Y, and Z. And I compared my parents to those parents and I was just very depressed, very bitter and angry towards them. Um, and I remember my senior year, we're getting ready for prom. I we, we're last minute trying to get stuff together because I can't make up my mind. I, I, I'm a, I'm a woman trying to look good and I just couldn't make up my mind and it was a stressful time. And I remember, um, we were getting ready. We're in this hotel and my mom was just like staring at me. And I, at the time I was like, oh my gosh, like, why is she staring? Like do fix my hair, touch up my makeup. Like, why are you just staring at me? Um, and I just remember just seeing the smile on her face. Like she just, it was just a content smile. And it, it reminded me of Philippians 4. Um, and Philippians 4 is a verse I know by heart because she used to make me repeat it all the time growing up because I complained a lot as a kid. Um, but specifically, it talked about um, being content in every circumstance. And I just, she just had this look of contentment on her face. Like, obviously, this is not what she would have pictured for her oldest daughter, um, you know, getting ready for prom in a, in a motel. Like, this is not at all. But it she she was at she was at just she had this like peace and i just remember that like seeing her just helped me um in that time getting just getting through that long story short with that with prom i became prom queen have my little crown right above my head right now um woo -woo. i can't hear you guys if you are doing that but i'm doing that because i was very proud it was unexpected um fast forwarding to college i left for college. My parents were still in a transitional state, hadn't found a home yet. Um, it was very hard for me to leave them as much as I wanted to leave and go off and do my own thing. I was not okay leaving them knowing the situation that they were having. And my parents sacrificed so much, put, brought me to Florida um, to a school that so many people said, no, why are you letting your daughter go there? Um, that school is expensive. How are you going to pay for it? My parents did not care. They knew that that's what I wanted. They knew that, um, I had prayed about it. I, I like I felt in my heart of hearts that God was calling me to Florida to full sell university to do this. And they went out of their way to make it happen. Um, so they get me to Florida. I'm still depressed because they do not have a home. And here they are paying for my apartment. I'm living in this really nice apartment um, in sunny Florida. And they're not they don't have everything they need. And so I'm like, oh, my gosh, like I can't. So I cried and I cried and I cried and. I remember my I, I remember my mom telling me like oh you know find a church there's a church right there in your in your community just go there and I was like no I don't want to go there it looks it looks weird don't want to go there and I remember one day I was just bawling I was so overwhelmed and I just remember hearing my mom's voice was like there's a church right there you can walk to it go to church and so I went to church that day um, and I immediately just I mean I the the people there were just so lovely, brought me in, had a little home away from home. Um, but it still wasn't, it wasn't home. It's, it's, you can be somewhere and everyone treats you, but it still wasn't home. And I was still like, okay, this is not it. This is not it yet. Um, so I would just sit on the phone sometimes with my mom. And I mean, I wouldn't say anything. She would just be on the phone and that just, it always brought me peace. Um, just having that. And before I, I never really done. I, when I was back home, I didn't do that before. Um, but this is my first time doing, doing that. I feel like I'm just rambling at this point. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm just trying not to get emotional and trying to stay on track. Um, so yes, fast forward. I have been fast forwarding a lot, but fast forward. Um, I barely make it through college because I had a year of just, like I said, depression. That first year was really depressed parents didn't have a home. Um, but I remember just praying and fasting and praying and fasting, praying and fasting and God opened up a door. Um, they get a home. Everything's better now. I, I can focus on my education. Um, and from there, my parents, like they kept encouraging me because I wanted to quit. I'm not an education person. I, applaud everyone who loves school. My sister loves it. I do not love school. I love learning, but I do not like busy work. Um, but I just remember them just kept encouraging and reminding me of a wild radical dream that I have. Um, and that dream is to be the NFL commissioner, the first female NFL commissioner. And my, my parents started calling me commish 
all the time. That kind of just became my token name. And I remember just sitting down and and remind like reminding reminding myself of those like those moments with my parents and specifically um first timothy 4 12 when paul is telling um timothy he told he told him do not let do not let anyone despise you for your youth but set the believers an example in speech and conduct and love and faith and in purity and that became just my clutch that scripture right there i just kept it going i had a lot of people tell me oh you're too young or like why don't why do why aren't you going to a party or why aren't you doing any of these things? And I remember my my mom and my dad just you didn't have to do all those things. Like that's not what God called you to. Like you know what He's called you to. Focus on what He's called you to and keep on pushing. Um, and so that's what I did. And I got involved in a lot of different areas in Florida. Um, I am a mother's child. I talk a lot, and so I naturally met a lot of people. Um, and doors just began to open doors. I never even knocked on, um, the beautifully written, um, bio that my sister wrote for me. Um, you guys heard sit on the board for a nonprofit, like a, a major nonprofit for an MLS soccer team. Like that I am the youngest person on the board, the youngest. That is why that's partially the reason I am secretary because they're like, oh, she's young. She's good with technology. Go ahead and type. Um, everyone is old enough to be my mom. Um, so it, it's just a testimony of God's faithfulness of, um, just the scripture. Like, do not let anyone despise you for your youth. Um, just set an example. And so it's crazy to have adults, um, that can be my grandparents coming to me, asking me for advice or asking me, um, what I think, um, giving me a seat at the table, um, just a variety of different things, um, so I just want, I, I want to encourage you all, and if, I'm not sure who's in the room, but if there are any young people and older people, if you are ever in a situation, um, and I, if this person's your mother or a mother figure, listen to them, <laughs> listen to them. They, they're not always right, but they, they, they know a little something, um, and just trust them, trust Trust that God has placed them in your life as a figure of authority for a reason. They're not there to um, belittle you. They only want the best for you. Um, but at the same time, you have to know what God has said, what God has told you as well. Um, and yes, I did want to open this up for Q&A if anyone had any questions about um, anything I said or about my job, um, things like that. I feel like I was all over the place, but I am so nervous right now. I my palms are sweating a lot. Yes, and I'm sure because we're virtual, if there are any questions, people can definitely type them in. And if you're still online, um, then you can definitely answer any questions. Um, or any comments that anyone may have in the room. We'll be more than happy to take any comments or questions that we may have in the room before we move on to our next segment. That uh, while while the, the typing is happening or the, the thinking is happening in the room, Judy, I wanted to let you know that you said quite a lot that not no matter the, the age, you really said something key, and that is don't downplay what your gifts are and your dreams are. And just because it doesn't look the way you envisioned it as far as the path that you have to take to get there, I love how you stayed the course. You you stayed, you stayed rooted and grounded in your faith and in your faith, not only your faith in God, but your faith in what he had put in you. And I do believe that you can and will be the first commissioner. Commission. I do believe that because everything, yes, let's give it up for her. Because everything else that you said that you want to happen, happened. So what makes this any different? So I applaud you and I'm just, I'm just waiting on what is next. Um, and I'm loving the, the comments that are coming in for you. There's a question. Um, it's actually a really good question. Miss Valerie said, how do you handle it when elders treat you like you don't know anything? 
Um, one, I bite my tongue first and I say, Lord, <laughs> give me the words to say, um, because I, I can be quick, quick to get my mouth popped. So I do try and like, just take a moment. Um, or, and I'm just patient. I just try, I, I, I'm patient. I try to meet them where they are because I realize that sometimes they're not coming at you what they're trying to just nitpick, but it, they're ignorant to something as well. Um, and so I, I let my actions show. I don't say anything anymore. I just keep on working and they see for themselves and they have no choice but to respect what I do. Excellent answer. Excellent, excellent answer. That, and that is something to hold on to that we should, you know, let people think what they're going to think, but you stay the, you stay the course. I love that. I love the encouragement that I see coming through um, online as well. Um, I love it. Yeah, I, I, I agree, Tracy. Yeah, you are the commission. You are the commission. <laughs> and um, I do have one more thing. So in 2016, I remember being in my room and I was just journaling and for some reason, God was like, just get a paper. And I had some markers in front of me and I wrote the number 12 down. And here it is right here. Wrote the number 12 down. Had no idea why for so many years. I was like, God, what is the purpose of this? I'm going to throw this away. And he just would not let me throw this away at all. Um, and so there, the, in 2020, he started showing me different things. So the first thing was 12 businesses. 12 businesses and opportunities that he would bring me through. And I'm walking in about five of them now. Um, and then there was the number 12. It was 12 years with the woman um, who had an issue of blood. And then there was a 12 year old girl. And I remember that story be so, so vividly um, learning about it and just studying it because she had desperation and she didn't care who was around her. She didn't care if she had to crawl. She just knew all I needed was a just just a touch. Just that's all I needed. Um, and that has kept me. It's like, that's all I need. That's all I need is just one little moment, one opportunity. And so here we are. You're hosting your 12th annual <laughs> conference right here. And, and I just hear God's like, you need, that's all it is. It's just that one moment. It's not a big plot. It's not this huge platform. It's in the small moments that I can do great things. Um, and so that was just a really big reminder for me and for anyone else that if you are in a situation and you know that God's called you great things, start with the small. Be faithful in the small areas. Miss um, Cookie, you have been faithful with this conference 12 years. I applaud you for that. And I know God's going to just continue stretching you, stretching this, building this. Um, and I know so many people have been blessed by this. So thank you for this opportunity. Thank you all for listening to me. <laughs> thank you. And you know what? If you get the opportunity while you're on screen, go ahead and screenshot yourself because look at what's above your head. So I just want to, <laughs> I just want to point that out to you that that 12 is above your head for a reason. So again, thank you so much. I am, I was blessed by this. And, and when we see you on television as a commissioner, I'm going to say, remember that <laughs> she was <laughs> she said it was going to happen because it is going to happen. The same way you fasted and prayed for everything else, like I said a moment ago, and it came to pass, God is not slack concerning his promises and your best is coming. Your best is coming. Thank you. Let's give it up again for you. So I said there were going to be some goodies and some giveaways. I remember saying that. So I have something here. So those of you who are online, I haven't forgotten you because I have some tangible things here. Um, but Christian, if you would give, if you would come on my left side, that would be great. And you all, this is my handsome son, Christian, that is helping me this wonderful Mother's Day weekend. I just need your hand. I said, this is my wonderful son. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I didn't see the hearts go up. I'm, I'm looking at some social media. I didn't see the hearts of my handsome son, Christian. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. That one. I'm looking for something specific. Hold that, because I'm about to give 
something to someone on the and I think it's probably this is the goes back. And if you would kindly, sir, if you would give this to the lovely lady sitting in the where the orange dress is on that side. This is for you for being a special guest on today on our Yes, indeed. Those of you who are online, I have not forgotten you. So I did see um, some people who were sharing, and I saw some people who were making comments, and I'm loving that. So I am going to, um, let's see, I think it was Valerie who was making the most comments. So Valerie, you are going to get something from me in the mail. So I will connect with you since I already know how to connect with you. I will connect with you and I'm going to get your mailing information and send you something very special. See, it pays to be a part of Pain and Glory. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. It, you get to get some goodies. And I have some more things that are, that are back here that, ooh, ooh, y'all will see in a little bit. Y'all will see what I have and why I have it. And everything, it couldn't even fit back here. So, <laughs> some wonderful things. But again, thank you for being a part of this year's 12th annual Restoring the Bond Mother Daughter Love event. There's still time for you to share if you're on social media, for you to share with others, tell others about it. I am honored to bring our next speaker. Gotta love technology. Here we go. Our next speaker, I love her name. I, I, I have a unique name, and we just heard from Unique. But listen, I love this name. Our next speaker, her name is Exquisite Williams. You, you gotta be something when your name is Exquisite. Now, come on now. Exquisite is a 22 year old writer and a podcaster, right from right here in Atlanta, Georgia. She got her bachelor's degree at, from LSU in English and Communication Studies. While at LSU, she started a podcast, Our Moments, where she shares her love for the transformative nature of books to her audience. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to present to you Unique Williams. Exquisite Williams. Exquisite. Well, I'm not unique. Unique is my sister. Uh, so, I mean, I, I mean, I'm unique in the sense of the the proper spelling of the word, but not in the sense of my sister's spelling of the word. Anyway, um, hello. Uh, I can't see or hear anybody, so I'm just going to assume, hello, how are y'all? I'm just going to wait and assume y'all are all responding. Um, yes. So even though I wrote Unique's bio, my bio is infinitely shorter just because I can write for other people. I don't know how well I can write for myself. But I wanted to talk um, just a little bit about um, my podcast and what I'm doing. So, yes, I will be I technically have my degree. I haven't graduated yet, so I can't fully say I'm an LSU alumna for another two weeks. This time in two more weeks, I'll have those degrees. So then I can say it. But I would like to talk about my podcast a little bit. It is called Our Moment. Um, mainly because uh, my mom, I was on the phone with her and I was like, I need to start a book club or podcast and I don't know what to call it. And my mom was in a book club um, before me called My Moment that she really liked. And she was like, you should play off of that. And I was like, oh yeah, you're right. And she came up with the R moment. So once again, I don't know, listen to your mothers because they'll give you <laughs> good advice. But my podcast specifically is meant to uplift and share stories by people of color, specifically black women, because we don't get to see us a lot on like the New York Times bestselling authors list or see those stories told. Even when I was a kid, I read a lot of books and the main characters didn't really look like me much, but I got the idea mainly because I read this book called Legend Born and I'll give y'all a rundown, but first, I saw the, I read it because I saw the cover. And if my camera would focus, just look at how beautiful <laughs> this cover is. Um, 
and legend born is about motherhood and it's about daughterhood and it is about this young girl she's 16 and she loses her mother in a very tragic accident and she throughout the whole book she's trying to like process this accident and process like like what happened to her mother and how like what their relationship even meant and how also in her like direct lineage none of none of the um women had their mothers for a long time so she is the daughter of a mother who lost the mother the granddaughter of a mother who lost the mother and so on and so forth so the book itself is really like looking at that what happens when you don't get your mother for a long time especially because her mother did not tell her because her mother knew she was going to die young and she didn't she didn't tell her that something was going to happen to her and they had a very um contentious relationship because her mom just wanted the best for her and our main character Bree just wanted to do Bree you know as all young teenage girls are because I was the exact same way um me and my mom are much closer now than we were when I lived in the house with her I will say that um so Bree goes off to go to a college she goes to um UNC Chapel Hill and it is a predominantly white institution. And she discovers that she has these powers that she inherited from her mom, um, which, it, and she doesn't have her mom to guide her on how to use them. She's in this like new place, new people who don't look a lot like her, who treat her strangely because she is a, a young, powerful black girl. And I was like, wow this character is just like me for real. So I was like, I need to share this and I need to be able to talk about this. So the first thing I did was start a book club at my school called the Our Moment Book Club because I don't like coming up with names after I already found a good one. And it was just me and a bunch of other black students within my honors college at LSU. And I was like, I want a way to make this online as well so that's when i started the podcast um yeah and so i just most podcasts is just me breaking down what happened in the book breaking down the like histories of the author herself tracy dion who she's great y'all should all read the book and watch my podcast um and how like these stories and what what they can tell us about who we are now and how we relate to our mothers and how we experience blackness in a world where it is not <laughs> seen as something that is good or something that is like meant to be treated gently you know and so like when we read these books by these characters with like these powerful main characters who are black women maybe we ourselves and other younger people because one of the big things about literature and especially for literature that's written for young adults and children is that it has amazing socialization properties like they can know that they can do this or do a thing go to college go to school handle that really sad moment in their lives if they read a character doing the exact same thing um another book that i will eventually talk in my podcast is this book series it's called, uh, this book is called Redemptor, but it's from a book called Ray Bear. And it's also about mothers um, and daughters. And, but this book, the mother-daughter duo has a very contentious relationship, again, because the mother doesn't really like the daughter. And it's like, that's something that's considered like taboo. We don't talk about <laughs> like, what if the kid has bad vibes? And how does that deal? How do the, how do the children themselves deal with that? And how do we like, understand that that type of mother-daughter relationship and the book handles it really well and talks about how like no they have to find this common ground where they can speak and understand like each other so those are the books I like to speak on a lot um and I like to read and also the stories that I like to write also deal with that same like matrilineal uh motherhood daughterhood grandmothers and the importance of knowing our history and how, um, especially for Black people, our history was cut off because of slavery. That's one of the like most like terrible things about slavery that people I feel like don't really understand. Like the effects of it were that we were cut off from that history. So I write in order to give it back to us. So this year, when I wrote my thesis 
for school in order to graduate, I wrote it on a, a theme I like to call fictive grief, which is the idea that when we write, we can take pain of the past and translate it and share it with one another in order to um, better ourselves and better our relationships. Yes, so I'm, I don't want to take any more, up much more time. Um, questions, comments, concerns? I can't hear anybody. Concerns because you did an amazing, amazing job at that You did exactly as your name indicates. You did an amazing, amazing job. Thank you so much. Let's give it up for Exquisite. Woo! Woo! I like Exquisite. I like what you said when you talked about the book club um, and your desire for it and how when looking at the books that you were even growing up, how the characters didn't look like you. And in your podcast, you share, you open up a whole different world for your listeners and for your viewers who are now open up to a whole new world that you invite them into. And I love the energy that you have and the positivity that you share. So I am, I'm loving, loving, loving that. Thank you so much. How long have you, this has been going on for how long with, with the actual podcast you have now? Um, I started the podcast in September of last year. Right now we are on a the first season is done and I, I was like, I need to go graduate and then we'll start the next season. But <laughs> you can find it on YouTube, anywhere you can find spot podcasts. Um, I discovered <laughs> that um, much like my mother, the older generation doesn't really like Spotify. So I put it on YouTube for everybody as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you just look up Our Moment, a literary podcast, it's anywhere you find podcasts like that. Our Moment, a literary podcast. I Love it, love it, love it, love it. Thank you so much, Exquisite. Let's get up again for our precious Exquisite. So we are going to move along. Listen, guys, like I told you, I've got some more goodies that I'm going to be giving away. So stay close, stay tuned. We've already given away some. There's going to be more to come. So this young lady, our last speaker, is such a sweetheart. I mean, really. I mean, she is like a walking rainbow. She's just, just a sweetheart. We have with us Destiny Danielle. She is a published author, awareness advocate, conglomerate strategist, emergent coach, coach, and transformational speaker. She has a passion for words and God since a young age. An educator at heart, Destiny teaches, empowers, and inspires others with light and love. With her bodacious belief that she, that we all are here to dismantle bloodline traumas and generate dynasty wealth, Destiny seeks to encourage her readers, clients, and listeners to emerge and see God in every facet of their lives. Ladies, I am honored to present to you Destiny Danielle. How are you guys? The I'm virtual. I can't hear you. But anyway, hey y'all. <laughs> so I am Destiny Danielle, and I am so very honored to be on the stage with you all. I am honored to be sharing my story with you all. And as a teacher and a preacher with a degree in communication, I can be long-winded, but I prayed to God and was like, all right, God, keep that long-winded spirit to a minimum so we can respect everybody's time. So we going to see how this goes. But any hoosers, I thank you all for your wonderful testimonies and your stories. They have been so empowering and impactful. Like I was sitting over here like, now, Lord, you know, I'm supposed to go first so I can go ahead and get it over with. Got me sitting over here all nervous and shaking and stuff, <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and get into it. So I am going to come from Mark 4 and 22. It is a for me throughout this entire season that I've been in. And it says for nothing is hidden except to be revealed 
nor has anything been kept secret, but that it would come to light. That is, things are hidden only temporarily until the appropriate time comes for them to be known. So if I had to give this little Easter speech a title, it would be come out of hiding and believe the word of the Lord. So when I was like 10 or so, God told me that I was going to travel the world as an author. He told me he was going to use me to change the lives of millions worldwide through his words. He told me that he would use me to speak to the nations. And for a while, I believed him. So I filled notebooks with poetry, novels, scripts. And every time he spoke to me, he would say, weep no more. I continued to believe the word of the Lord. Countless times I was told confirming words by the people in my life about what God had said. So I continued to believe the word of the Lord. But then reality set in. And God's dream of using me became white noise compared to the shrieking of the circumstances of my life. From being molested as a child to being bullied and harassed at school, there was no way that God could use me. That just wasn't happening. I became good at hiding what God had put inside of me. I felt like I wasn't deserving of God to truly use me. I struggled heavily with so many things that I was like, nah, God, you need perfect people to use. And that's not me. So I'm just going to kick it in the back. And that's just going to be that. I got so good at hiding that I couldn't even find me. But thanks be to God that he found me because he told me last year that I was going to write five books in 90 days. And I gave him a whole list of excuses as to why that wasn't going to happen. The main excuse was that I couldn't find time in my schedule as a full time teacher. He said, OK, watch this pandemic. You're working from home. Then I was like, I right, got you funny. I'm still not doing it because. I don't know how to publish a book hmm. and I don't have the money to pay anybody to publish these books. And then God showed me exactly how to publish books and create my own publishing imprint that he gave me the vision for when I was 10. When he was saying weep no more, the weep stands for weeping eye entertainment productions, which is the name of the publishing imprint that these books, spoiler alert, were published under. But then I was like, okay, God, well, it took me six months to write my first book, Never Forsaken. So how are we going to write five books in three months? But it was like every excuse that I gave God, he was like, watch me work. Trust me and just walk. He literally gave me the instructions for every book. But I still did not believe the word of the Lord. Question after question, I asked. And every time his response was the same, trust me and walk. It was literally like I was standing at the end of the tunnel and God was standing on the other side where the light was. I could see the light. I was like, okay, God, I see the light at the end of that tunnel over there. That's you. But I couldn't find my way through the darkness. I was terrified to go through the darkness. So I tried every which way to get to the end of the tunnel, except the way that God said. <laughs> but then chaos and calamity kind of hit my life and I realized I'm more lost trying to do it my way than I would possibly be if I just trusted God and walked. So I literally had <laughs> no other choice but to trust God and walk. And when I surrendered to God, he allowed me to write eight books in 90 days, which we were able to publish under the publishing imprint that he gave me, We Think I Entertainment Productions. And not only did we write those eight books in 90 days with my full-time job of being a teacher during the pandemic, but we also partnered with other aspiring authors and business owners to develop their brands and write their stories while also building an entire brand from scratch constructing several courses, webinars, websites, and two separate coaching experiences, all because I decided to believe in the word of the Lord. Because in the 
God showed me the light that he had placed on the inside of me. The light that banishes and removes all fear and removes all the excuses. The light that life had really tried to dim time and time again. As a child, when I was molested, as a young girl, when I was being bullied and harassed, as a teenager, when I was misunderstood, and even as a young woman, when I was trying to figure it out on my own, God wrecked my life to reset me by putting me in the middle of what me and my clients call a pain nami, a tsunami of just pain and just despair and Lord, what are you doing? <laughs> because God told me to follow him, not try to figure it out. And so with every step that I took, he was revealing and uncovering more of himself in me. And as he led me, he stripped my fears of being great because he reminded me of the promise that he gave Jesus in John 14 and 12, that we would do greater works. God released me from my shame by revealing the power of his unconditional love. And then he told me that the light I was seeing and feeling at the end of the tunnel was really his unconditional love. Because every time I fell flat on my face, he was right there to pick me back up and dust me off. Every time he called me back to him, I remember being in that low season and was like, God, <laughs> There has got to be more to life than where I am right now. And he was like, yeah, there is. When you trust me and walk. His response was so clear. I just needed to stop trying to figure it out and follow him through. With his unconditional love, he released me from the guilt I felt from wasting so much time being bound to my fear of hiding. And he reminded me that the time wasn't lost. It was the preparation. And the more I began to follow God and believe the word of the Lord, the more my doubts drifted away. Because as I followed him, he allowed me to tap into his divinity, learning more about his character and how to navigate the tunnel. I began to believe the word of the Lord again. He said that he would use me to speak to the nations and while I haven't made it to all the nations yet, I trust the word of the Lord because in the tunnel, he reassures me of his word. Philippians 1 and 6 affirms that he's going to do it. First John 4 and 4 reaffirms that everything I need is already inside of me. Jeremiah 29 and 11 reaffirms that the life of God's dreams will prosper me. It will not harm me. It gives me hope and a future. So whatever it is that you're going through, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, believe the word of the Lord because it can't return to him void. God has called you, me, each and every one of us to be planet shakers. And he has given us incredible gifts that he's going to use to shake this planet. I believe it. And TBH, if you're really honest with yourself, you believe it too. You want to believe that you're called for something great, but the enemy keeps you bound with fears and shame and guilt. And so you wait on it instead of walking in it. But the very gifts that God has given each of us are the gifts that he's going to use for us to pick up our own crosses and navigate through this tunnel. They are the light that are going to take us from waiting on the life of God's dreams into walking in the life of God's dreams. So this little Easter speech, I'm gonna wrap it up quite simply with, you have a purpose, you absolutely matter. And the choice to believe the word of God is always yours. I'm Destiny Danielle, and it has been a pleasure to share my story with you. I love you, and I mean it. Destiny, oh my gosh. I love how you said that we are all planet shakers. I love that. One thing you said 
that stuck with me. And that is when you said that God had given you something when you were 10 and he made it manifest as an adult. There's so many of us that we saw ourselves doing stuff as a kid and we dreamed and we had these goals and we had big, as, as your, your, your bio says, audacious dreams. And then as the, old, the older we get, we put those things aside. I, you couldn't tell me when I was a little girl that I wanted Wonder Woman. You couldn't tell me. The invisible jet, the, the magic lasso, the bangles, all of that. And so because Wonder Woman came in to save the day, Wonder Woman had the answer. She was also compassionate. She was also, you know, she had to figure out. I was a stick when I was a little girl. So anyway. But she had it all, right? She looked the part. She was all of that. And she was something to aspire to be for me, right? When we got, when I got older, eh, Wonder Woman wasn't really, you know, I started growing up, growing up. So those ideas and those visions of fearlessness and all that kind of waned away. But I love that that 10-year-old destiny still was in there saying, hey, remember me? Remember, there's something in us that we got to do. I love how that 10-year-old Destiny actually lived up to her name and did what Destiny called her destiny to do. I love that. I love that. And I appreciate you so much, my sister. Let's give it up again for our Destiny. Destiny, share with us again how people can connect with you. So I am on social media. Instagram is underscore hi, I'm Destiny Danielle. Um, my website is hi, I'm Destiny Danielle. Facebook is Hi, I'm Destiny Danielle. <laughs> so anywhere that you're looking for me, look for Destiny Danielle. You'll see this chocolatey face and we can connect and do all the wonderful things that God has called us to do. I love it. I love it. So just so I'm clear, you it's hi, I'm definitely <laughs> I want to make sure it was hi. I'm just kidding. Thank you again. Thank you again. So you guys listen, this from from Britta to unique to exquisite to destiny. I am telling you, we have had some amazing ladies that have shared from experience to testimony to life, life hacks to all things feminine. And I am loving it. In this room today, I want to share with you who are virtual, as well as those who are in the room, I want to share with you our vendors that are here. So if our vendors would come up. Um, and I will have, give them a moment to introduce themselves to you and also tell you how they, you can connect with them. They got some good stuff in here, y'all. I've already listened. I'm not even going to speak about what I've already spent um, already. It's not y'all business, but anyway, I, I need y'all to do the same. So um, if my members would come forth now, and they are going to, and, and you guys, um, you can look right into the camera here as well as share with um, the people that are in the room. So here we are. Thank you. What one second? I don't want to, I don't want to cut you off. I know you have some on, but if you want I'm to give you the if you want to bring something with you. I know you have some on, but if you if you ladies want to bring something with you to show um that way. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. They can't see you. They can see you, but they can't see you. Okay, now I'm gonna start again. <laughs> Okay, so my name is Tanya Polk. Good afternoon. Um, my business is all about class accessories. So if you are familiar with paparazzi accessories, the five dollar jewelry, um, that is what I sell. So really quickly, I started this because I have a 19 year old. I know I probably don't look like it, but I have a 19 year old that was going out to Tuskegee. Didn't want him to spend all of my money. Mm -hmm. So um, this is why I started the company, just to have something to do so I can send him his little extra money. So if you're online on Facebook, please, please go to All About Class Accessories, and you'll find me on Facebook and on Instagram. It's a little play on words because I'm also a high school assistant principal. Thank you. 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 Th
Thank you. 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 Um, you can reach, you can come on social media at official Mia Wallace and also on social media as official Mia Wallace. And Mia, if you could get a little closer to the camera so they can see exactly what you have in your hand. And then when you go up, you can get a little closer. Yeah, and then when you go up, you can get a little closer. Yeah, and then when you go up, you can get a little closer. Hello, everyone. My name is Tracy R. Rogers. Um, I have a t shirt business, um, and I'm I'm out of Noonan, Georgia. So um, if um, you would like to reach me, you can reach me at Unity T-shirts and Designs um, on social media. And um, I'm wearing one of my products that I sell. Thank you. Here's another one. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Beth Sprinkles Goodman, and I'm here representing, yes, it's me, hey girl. I am here representing Kingdom Clothes, but my main assignment here is to speak to all of the daughters that are in the house. All the daughters that are in the house. Now, all the favorite daughters in the house. If you realize what just happened, when I asked the question, all the daughters in the house to acknowledge themselves, the confidence level was different. When I said the favorite daughter in the house, the confidence then became with elation. You, my daughter, you, my daughter, in the room, you are God's favorite daughter. Every day that you rise, every day that you rest, you are God's favorite daughter. Do not ever forget that. And part of the decision and choice with answering to all the daughters in the room and all the favorite daughters in the room came with confidence. That was the difference. It was about confidence. And that's what I do. I cultivate confidence in women, young ladies, and little girls. So, I challenge you today, if you're ready to step to the next level of confidence, allow me to serve you and cultivate confidence and become your coach. You can reach me at coachsprinkles at gmail.com. I can be reached on social media at Beth Sprinkles Goodman. And let's get that confidence going because what's wrong with being confident? Nothing. According to Psalms, he said, Lord, you favored me. You made my royal mountain stand still. Whatever mountain you're going through, he made it stand still. But when he hid his face from us, we are troubled. So favorite daughters, rise up. Favorite daughters, stand in your confidence. Sprinkles. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm telling you, we have some amazing people. I have one more person who is behind the scenes, so I'll let her stay where she is. But the way that you all are able to even see me, who are virtually, is our production specialist, who is Ms. Keisha Way. And so, <laughs> Keisha came in and just lit up the room. And so, um, I'm so appreciative of her. I would love for you all to follow her. Um, all things um, production, all, and she's also a wonderful transformation coach. Um, so you go to www.keishaway.com, and that's spelled K-E-S-H-E-A way.com. So um, I want you guys to absolutely follow her. So listen, we have come to a part of this particular 12th year Restoring the Bond event where we have the rites of passage that I talked about to you earlier. If you just tuning in or you uh, or if you missed it, the rites of passage that we do is a little different. You may, if you Google rites of passage, you'll see that it may say something like that when a young woman is is you know giving something a task or something that is passed down from the mother onto 
to something to, that, that transfers her over to womanhood. We're a little different. And if y'all y'all have been with us any amount of time, especially in the previous 11 years, well, the last two years when we had a virtual, so we weren't able to have it, but in the other nine years, if you've been with us, you already know that the rites of passage is a special moment. Now, for those who of you who are joining us, you won't get a chance to see the full rites of passage, um, but that's okay because I'm going to give you instructions just like I'm going to give instructions for the ladies who are in the room, and then you follow through on your end to do your part on your end. But we want to we want to keep the continuity of the rites of passage. So there's going to be a part where we're going to leave you guys, but it'll be okay. It'll be okay. But before we get there, before we get there. I have some more giveaways. So, Ms. Keisha, is there anyone who's online who stood out to you? It can be anyone who has stood out to you who, who you think should be the recipient of something awesome from Pain and Glory. Um, Tracy Avery Rogers. Tracy Avery Rogers. Woohoo! <laughs> Tracy is in the room! Introduce myself to Michelle Johnson. Michelle's already gone, so that's cool. Okay. That's cool. I tell you what, I tell you what, let's, unless you have somebody else. Now, if you have someone else, then I'm, I'm going to give this one to someone in the room. We can go to someone in the room. So, this one goes to you, Bianca. Aww. Aww. <laughs> In the rites of passage, like I said, it's, it's we call it that, but it actually has a different kind of meaning because um, we have women, ladies, females of all ages in this room <laughs> and online, and so and all, all different ages and experiences. And I talked a moment ago about when we were little girls. I remember having one of these. Yeah. Oh, we were yeah. so cute. Yeah. We were just a little princess, weren't we? We were just so cute and adorable, weren't we? And we, we had the little scepter. <laughs> oh yeah, we were cute. <laughs> Oh, we can do everything with our, and, and don't let us have a frilly dress. Don't let us have a dress where we can be in and be in stuff. Oh, come on. But then, when we put on this when we were little kids, and this is lightweight. This is a, this is maybe a few ounces. It's not even heavy, right? So we put it on when we're a little girl, and we play it. We go outside with it on. We want to go to the store with our mama with it on. We want to, you know, we go, you know, do everything with this little tiara on. But as we get older, this thing becomes a little heavy. As we get older, we go we go from being a sweet princess to now we're a queen. Oh, and that sounds good to say. I'm a queen. That sounds real good to say. But if you know anything about hierarchy, the queen doesn't get any help. The queen has people subject to her. The queen had heavy is the head that wears the crown. Mm -hmm. You got to be everything to be to everybody. You got to hold it up straight. You can't let it be crooked because somebody may be watching. You can't, you got to hold your head up straight. Y'all remember those days 
when you were little, I, I know I did, I may be telling how old I am, but it's okay. When you were younger, you, in order to keep your head up, your mother would have you walk with a book on your head. Anybody oh, right. even, even, if, even yeah. if you've never seen that, to keep your posture straight, That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right? So if I were to move my hand from this tiara, it would fall. But that was okay when I was a little girl, because I just pick it up. Because this is my little tiara, and I was fine with it. I don't care if it fell off, I just put it back on. But somehow we became these queens that were supposed to be, you know, exemplified when that crown, that crown even tilts a little. Oh, oh, I can't let people see. I got to get it right. And we've seen the cute little memes that say, if you see a queen's uh, a crown tilted, just straighten up for now. Take that thing off. <laughs> if you see my crown tilted, take it off. You know why I'm saying that? Because we've gotten so accustomed and acclimated to saying things that seem wonderful. And it sounds great to say that we're a queen. That sounds beautiful. And it is a compliment in the, te in the context that it said. But if you think about how heavy the weight it is for you to have to be that for everybody at all times. The Queen of England is always the Queen of England. You never hear them call her by her first name. You never hear the Queen of any other hierarchy of country or, or, or continent where there is a where they have um, queen where they have kingdoms. You never hear them call. We never see them in, in, in unattended. You never see them having a, a time to themselves. You never see them where there's not paparazzi around them, which means there's always someone looking at them at all times, scrutinizing every move that they make. That is a heavy yes. crown to wear. When we were little girls and being princesses, it was okay if we needed help. If we fell down when we were little kids, when we were a princess, it was okay because either we got back up or somebody came and helped us up and dusted us off and kept going. You try doing that as a queen and it's not, it doesn't look the same. We all told that, told that we're supposed to be bosses. Really? Who told us that? Because what happens when you have to be the boss all the time? When do I just get a chance to do some self-care? Because we never hear about that. You don't hear be a boss and self-care. You don't hear that. But today, today. Because it's a weight. Because somebody told us that we had to be something that we were never equipped to be. We were never equipped to be that. Somebody told us to hold a weight that we were never equipped to hold. Someone told us that we weren't good enough, whether they said it in those particular words or whether they showed it in action. We were told you're not good enough. You're either too tall, you're too short, you're too fat, you're too skinny, your hair's too short, your hair's too nappy, your hair's too straight. You, have, you, you don't have this, you don't have that. And we always hear that. We negate the other things that we've been told. We've been told, oh, you're so smart. We've been, we've been told you have so much great potential. We've been told all these wonderful things, but you know what stands up, we, what comes to the top? The things that we've been told or experienced that was the worst, even if it was a moment. Even if it was a moment, that moment stood to us like a barnacle on the side of a boat, and we stuck with that. But what if, what if, you could change the narrative. What if you could say, you know how we, we, we've had that, we say, you know, I wish I could go back in time. If I, if I knew then what I know now, if I, could, if I could tell my ex whatever years old self this, or when I have children, I'm gonna tell them this, right? What if you had that opportunity? What if you could encourage yourself? What if there was a time machine where you could go back and say this? What if you could go back and say, you're really going to be all right. You're really going to make it. 
Don't be afraid to try that. Try it. Do it anyway. Do it scared. Do it afraid. You are beautiful. You are worthy. You are worth it. You are worth their time. They didn't know what they were doing. They did the best they could with what they knew how to do. What if you could rewrite your own narrative? Allergies and all. What if you could rewrite how you see yourself? Because sometimes when we look in the mirror, we spot check it. We look at, is there something on my eyes? Is my mouth clean? We look at sections of our face. We look at sections of our body. I heard someone say it recently. It was Sunday, as a matter of fact. That's why I heard this. It was Sunday. And he said, he asked a question, you know, how many of you, you know, when you when you got up this morning, you brushed your teeth and all that good stuff you did, you went through your morning routine. And then he asked a question, how many of you found something wrong with what you saw in the mirror? Hands began to go up. Because we can always find something wrong, but I believe Mary J. Blige has got it right. She got, it, she got it right. Mary J. Blige has got a whole lot of songs that, that, that'll make you be like, wait a minute now, Lord, am I, how was I feeling before this song came on? But she got this one right. When she said, good morning, gorgeous. Yes. She gave an affirmation that became an anthem. And so what I want for you to do, now for those of you at home, I want you to get a piece of paper. I want you to get a piece of paper. And I need you to, and as I'm telling the people online, I want you guys listening as well. I want you to get a piece of paper and I want you to write out, write down what you would say to encourage someone else that you wish someone had told you or will you want so, so or you want someone to tell you i want you to write encouragement now for those of you who are online i want you to write it out and i want you to not you got two steps here i want you to write it and i want you to mail it to yourself i want you to mail it to yourself now, you might be saying, well, I got to mail it to myself. I get to, I'll tell you why in a minute. Because you could just simply write it in and put it to the side. No, this is official business. I'm coming back to you in a moment. So the ladies in the room, you will be given a card. There are some colors here for those of you who are visual people like me. You might want a different kind, different kind of card. Can you start having this out? And you can choose whichever one you want. And I want, I want you to break some stuff. I want you to write an affirmation. It can be what you want someone, what you would have wanted someone to say to you, what you want to say to someone, what encouragement you want to give if you want the pen. And once you do, once you finish, I want you to put it in the box that I have up here. Because what's going to happen next, I'll share with you in just a moment. We'll write out an affirmation, what you want to share with someone, what you wish someone had told you. For those of you who are who are watching virtually, I applaud you because number one, you're on now. Number two, you have an added responsibility. You're writing out exactly what I shared and you're mailing it to yourself. Why are you mailing it to yourself? Because when you get something in the mail, it's different. When you get it in the mail, it's different. You can write it out and put it to the side, certainly. But this, this is different. This is you sending you the encouragement that you not only need, but deserve. So as we close out here live from you being here, we'll be here a little bit longer because we have um, one more exercise to do. We have an amazing, 
amazing experience for the ladies here, but you have to kind of be here for that one. That one, I can't really, uh, it's not really a virtual kind of thing, but I thank you for, the, for those of you who are here virtual. Thank you to Unique. Thank you to Exquisite. Thank you so much to Danielle for being our virtual speakers. Thank you for those who have, who have joined us online. I want to encourage you, if you're not already following us um, here on in our, in our Pain and Glory page, if you just happen to be a part of this um, event because someone shared it with you, I encourage you to follow us here on Pain and Glory, as well as if you're not already following us, we would love to see you over on the Pain Purpose Academy. That is where I share. I am a certified women's inner purpose and power coach. And every, um, every Tuesday, we have Purpose Magnet Moments, where I do free coaching every Tuesday night, 7 o'clock p.m. And actually, because of this event, I am going to be hosting an exclusive uh, webinar, especially for those who are in attendance here today. So if you're interested in being a part of the Choose You virtual experience, that's for people who are in attendance today. I want you to make sure that you put Choose You in the comments or inbox us right here at Pain and Glory. It is going to be a webinar, so it'll be virtual, and you'll have the opportunity to be a part of it. And we're going to be talking about just that, Choosing You. All right? In the meantime, thank you so much for being a part of this year's 12th annual uh, Restoring the Bond Mother Daughter Love event. I hope that you got something out of it as we did here. Be sure to connect with our vendors. Be sure to connect with our uh, speakers. We'll make sure that we stay connected to you, to our online winners, uh, to Valerie Champion, to Tracy. We thank you for, and for Michelle, we thank you uh, for being a part a part in winning some goodies um, that uh, were virtual. So again, thank you so much for being a part and we will see you next year.